Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to create a motion activated ISD1820 voice recorder and playback module and we're not going to use Arduino. In this video I'll be using the ISD1820 voice module, the HCSR501 motion sensor, a 5 volt relay module, a breadboard, a breadboard power supply, a 9 volt wall adapter to power that breadboard power supply, male to male and male to female jumpers. Here's the motion sensor that we're using and you'll see on top of it there are two orange potentiometers and this potentiometer right here is a time delay adjustment. This one right here is a sensitivity adjustment. When you're setting the sensitivity adjustment, when you turn that potentiometer clockwise, you're increasing the detection range and counterclockwise turning will decrease the maximum detection range. A clockwise turn of the time delay adjustment will extend the amount of time that that output signal is high and a counterclockwise turn of the time delay adjustment will shorten the length of time that the output signal is high. This uh, yellow tab here is called a trigger select jumper and there's two options. You can have it set at H or L. Right now it's set at L and that is the single trigger. In single trigger mode the motion is detected and the output, the output signal is high and remains high until the end of the time delay and all other motion detection is blocked. Now if you were to move that yellow tab down to the bottom two pins you'd be selecting H mode which is multiple trigger mode and in multiple trigger mode you're going to detect motion and that output will be high the output signal will be high until the end of the time delay but unlike the single trigger mode and multiple trigger mode other motions can be detected during that time and each time a new motion is detected it will reset the time delay. This is the 5 volt relay and on that relay you're going to see three ports on one side that says DC plus, DC minus, and IN. The DC plus is 5 volts, DC minus is ground, and the IN is the signal wire that comes from the signal pin of the motion sensor. That's the middle pin on the motion sensor. Now on the other side of the relay you're going to have a port labeled NO that's normally open. COM is common and the NO port is going to be connected to the PE pin of the ISD1820 module and the common uh, port will be connected to the positive rail of the breadboard. Typically these relay boards are used to separate a very high voltage from a very low voltage like from an Arduino but I still like them for projects like this because it's compact, it's cheap, it has a green light to identify that it has power going to it, it has a red light to identify that it's switching properly and for a beginner it's just convenient. Just be sure to supply 5 volts to this board because that is what's required to activate the coil to create the trigger. Otherwise it may not work properly. This is a breadboard power supply. The on off button is right here. And I usually use 9 volts uh, from a wall adapter here to power it. You also want to be sure that it's the jumper is on 5 volts. As you can see the options are 5 volt off and 3.3 volts. So uh, make sure the jumper is over the 5 volt. You can supply power to this breadboard power supply using a USB or 6 to 12 volts at the barrel jack, but don't use anything over 700 milliamp. Once you place this on your breadboard, you can supply either 3.3 volt or 5 volt to the rails, making it very convenient for prototyping using your breadboard. The ISD1820 does come with a speaker, but you have to solder the wires on yourself. You're going to apply some solder right here. This will be your positive, and right here will be your negative. I've added a better picture here just for convenience. These pads on the edge is where you're going to solder your wires, both the positive and negative. I would suggest adding solder to each of these areas before you solder the wires onto the speaker. Here are the pins for the ISD1820 module. You've got the VCC, which is 5 volt. You've got ground pin, and then we're going to use the pin, the PE pin. PE stands for playback edge activated. Basically, once you activate the playback, it'll play back the entire message without ending. The microphone is located at the top. In this module, you're going to press and hold the record button while you're recording your message. Your message can be 10 to 20 seconds long. As you can see, I have the PE pin of the playback module connected to the NO port of the relay. And the COM port of the relay is connected to the positive rail of my breadboard. I put the speaker in a bottle cap to help project the volume because it's not really loud at all. So it's louder than it was, but it's still not really that loud. There are two specific things I don't like about this module. One being the volume of the speaker. You do have to get creative in how you position the speaker so that the sound can reverberate off a flat surface to be projected. 
and that does help a little bit with being able to hear the recording, but not a whole lot. The second thing I'll mention is that the recordings are only going to be somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds. That may not work for some projects. As an alternative, be sure to check out my other videos using motion activated mp3 files. The link to those videos will be in the description. Here's a little wiring diagram that may be useful to you. Thank you for watching, I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again soon. Now to record a message. This is a recording. This is a recording.